Hi folks, welcome back and thanks so much for joining. So today uh, I'm going to teach you how to color match your wax so that your candles are a consistent color from batch to batch. Uh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to develop something called a color library and it doesn't require uh, expensive equipment or anything like that. If you're just starting out now, a color library is also, it's a very valuable addition to your um, toolbox, believe it or not. Uh, as you go forward, uh, the library that you build is going to help you along the way when you uh, choose colors for uh, new candles, that sort of thing. But also, it's going to make sure that you can produce the same colored candle time after time. Okay, now, what you're going to need for color matching, and uh, you already have this, okay? Uh, uh, you need a good scale. And you're going to need a few sheets of paper. And I suggest that you put everything in a folder. And you're going to want the heavy bond paper. Because we're going to be dotting the uh, paper with wax drops. And uh, I prefer the solid uh, color dyes for my uh, uh, coloring of candles. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just used to using it. I can uh, slice off uh, predictable amounts and uh, weigh them up. They, uh, they're pre-segmented to also uh, speed up the uh, color uh, matching process. It's a, it's a good deal all around. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, time permits, is I have some wax left over from the last project that already has uh, some Vibar 260 in it, and uh, that's what we're going to use. And this is still the straight soy wax. Now, I may show you a little bit about how the color is affected by the Vibar uh, so that you can include that in your library going forward. Now, this is also valuable if at some point you're forced to change something in your mix, whether it be the wax, the, uh, the color dye, that sort of thing. You still have something to refer back to, and you have a few notes. Uh, on either side of that color to help you gain understanding. Um, so we're going to get started. Enough yakking. Let's get rolling. And uh, I have a new addition to the lab. Well, I have a couple. Uh, that's a very cat thing to do, as high as you can get. Uh, uh, so. I'm going to put on an apron for this because, uh, yep, accidents happen. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to weigh out a half a pound of wax for each one of my samples. So let's get that rolling first, and then we're going to go into the details on how to uh, mix the, uh, the, uh, uh, the dye, this, this uh, color dye, how to melt it and add it to the wax, how to add the uh, scent. Uh, Likely, if we're using soy wax, uh, you're going to want to add the, uh, the Vibar. You're going to see why. So, uh, let me get untangled here, and then uh, I'll get something rolling here. Okay. Oh, by the way, this is the official colors uh, from Wikipedia, uh, the, uh, the Ukrainian flag. And we're going to try to match this the best that we can. So, uh, what I have here is I have sky blue. And I have yellow. However, uh, I have a few other uh, nears, just in case we want to adjust something. I think we're going to be pretty good with this, but I have uh, just a standard blue. I have a lavender and an indigo. Be careful with that indigo now. Uh, red, be careful with that red as well. I have peach and orange. And these will be able to adjust the hue of uh, the two colors that we're going to go for, the red and the yellow. But I think uh, these are going to work out fairly well. I think the yellow is going to be a very easy one to get. The blue is going to be a bit tricky. Okay. And I, uh, I also have the um, Pantone numbers and everything from the Wikipedia page. And I, uh, I'll post a link to that. Well, basically it's to the Wikipedia page. Farther down, they have the actual uh, numerical for the computer and that sort of thing. So, 
Now my problem was finding a um, a double boiler for this, and actually I've come across this, but this is not. Uh, be careful. This is glass right here, but this is special glass. I don't know if you guys know about this, but this is Visions wear. and uh, Visions. It's very old technology. Uh, I don't. I don't even know if they sell this stuff anymore. Made by Corning, uh, I think. Yeah, Corning, and uh, definitely worth it. Uh, you can boil. You can put this directly on heat. That's why. Why this is a, a very unique glass. Folks, I like my new sink. Uh, always start with hot water, which is what I have now. We're going to let that heat up a bit. Uh, we're going to measure out a half pound of that. And we're going to melt this as well. And we're going to measure out a half pound of this. Now this is simply this, but it already has the Vibar in it. So. Okay, so now that the uh, the wax with the uh, Vibar is pretty much melted, I'm going to start working on adding the color. And the color that I want to start with, of course, is, is the yellow. So I've got that uh, set up to start now. And um, I wanted to confirm the measurements, so I went back to my... Uh, the video where I made this wax and what I used was one pound of wax to a teaspoon of Vibar. Uh, that's this wax additive. Now Vibar is a polymer. This is uh, Vibar 260. It's a polymer and it helps um, it helps mix in and disperse the uh, scents and colors that you add to soy wax. Uh, so it um, it makes for a very nice uh, color. You're going to see that I hope. Anyway, so uh, I mixed up exactly one pound. And uh, either I've made a lot of candles or I am just uh, stupid lucky. But uh, this is exactly What was left over from the previous candle that I made, which is an eight ounce candle jar. Uh, so. I like these because they're predictable. Uh, Weights. These are all uh, five hundreds. So, so this is exactly eight ounces. <laughs> so I have uh, uh, exactly enough to. Uh, like I said, I was going to start with a half a pound, and I have a half pound. Uh, so good to go. I'm going to start melting my color. And there are a lot of folks now would. What they would do is they would chunk the color down in the wax, and they would superheat the wax. Bring it up to melt the collar, but there is a better way. So let's uh, let's start chopping on our little Hershey bar of uh, color dye here, okay? And it's in segments, and I might remember to give you a close up. What we're going to do though is because this stuff melts at a much higher temperature than the uh, soy wax. This is a 135 melt. This is going to melt at, I think it's 185. It's pretty, it's pretty far up there. I'm going to melt this separately. And then I'm going to add my wax to that and stir things up. And that's the way you're going to do it. Without bringing, because you don't want to melt your wax. You don't want to get it hot. 
You don't want to get it hot. It's worth saying twice. All right. Let's see what we get there from here. So, did I say one? Um, it's pretty small. I meant three. <laughs> I'm going to add two more. Well, what if I get it wrong? If I get it wrong, I get to do it again. Uh, where I would uh, start with a fresh bowl, um, put more color in there, and then uh, transfer what I have into that bowl. And, uh, which, by the way, uh, you want to be particular about recovering everything. So uh, to keep your weights accurate, that sort of thing, to make your library mean something. So speaking of the library, let's start that right now. Now what we have are um, let's start with the wax. We have a 135 melt temp soy wax. It's a straight cut soy wax. Uh, I think it's Golden Brands. Don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure. Golden Brands, 135. And then I have the Vibar 260. So I have one pound. No, I have one half pound. One thirty-five soy. Okay, Golden Brands, GB. And then I have uh, one teaspoon of the Vibar two sixty. And then for the color, I have three segments. And that is just a straight yellow. Okay, and we are melted, so let's cool things down a bit. And we're caught up on our library here. And as soon as we make it, what we're going to do is we're going to drop a little bit on here and see where we're at color-wise. All right, so. Okay, without delay, let's just tighten this up just a little bit, just to get it off of the edges. It'll be a little bit better before I add it. It's a trick. There we are. Just heat that up a little bit. Get it all out while we're mixing this. Make sure to keep the water out of your wax. There we are. So get it all out. Okay, there's only so much that you can do for that. So, 
the way to get by has my weight changed. Well, let's find out. Has your weight changed? Okay, we are 0 0.3 higher, 0 0.2 higher, uh, and that's the that's the weight of the. Uh, color segment so now we're going to just continue heating this don't let that color cool down too much or you'll find yourself heating the wax again okay now this gets washed up now this you can wash it in the sink just regular soap and water this is a uh, this is a soy wax it can go straight down the drain don't have to worry about it so just soap it up real good and uh, once it gets wet, it'll crumble up, and uh, so it washes right away, soap and water. Okay, everything's all melted together now, and uh, we're going to do a uh, we're going to do a drop test and see what this color is going to give us. Okay, that's the first drop, but you wanna you wanna drop it uh, at least three times, and you decided it would be a consistent amount of times. But what you're looking for is for uh, to not be able to see the paper underneath. You want to be able to see the wax, so you want to drop uh, three times. I do that uh, to know that I'm looking at the solid color wax. So now I do believe. that we may have to add just a little bit of orange to it or something because I mean but we'll see Oof. Okay, so we're melted now. So what we will do, and now you understand why we're doing this is because the color is uh, it's 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 expensive, and uh, you use very little of it. So uh, if you waste any of it, you're never going to get an accurate library. Uh, you'll never have uh, something that you can count on uh, where this yields this so uh, uh, it makes sense to uh, add your wax to your scent to your melted scent all the time so uh, it uh, will keep going transferring from one to the other until we get it all okay so we're at segments six all mixed up ready to test uh, let's get a weight Predictably, 8.6. So. Let's see where we're at. I honestly don't see much of a difference. 
but I did buy it from China. So just a quickie. Uh, I think uh, one whole one of these is uh, typically mixed in for one pound of wax. That's what they intend. Uh, I don't think they're going very deep. We're cooled down now, and uh, we have barely moved it. Uh, I seem to be paying the price for buying that, uh, for buying the cheap stuff, the uh, solid block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the whole thing, and uh, from that point there, I uh, I will be ready to uh, add just a little bit of orange because uh, we are getting closer. Uh, or am I just dreaming? But anyway, so that's what we're going to do is we're going to add all six of them. So uh, that would be um, the entire brick to a half a pound of wax. And I am assuming that uh, this was probably uh, one ounce. Uh, this, this may take a while, and it does. Honestly, it does. When you build your uh, color library and you start and you, uh, you have a color, and uh, you want to work with it just a little bit uh, instead of just going right into it and develop something like this uh, for the future. These are great things to have, so that's what we're going to be working with. Okay, so this one is just about full here. I'm going to do one more with the whole block, and then this one becomes uh, completed. And uh, we're going to store this away and start another one. Where we're at is here. Uh, so that color is pretty darn good. So we're going to go with that. So the formula here is um, the whole thing to a half pound of wax. And uh, this will be our permanent library so that we can refer to this uh, whenever we need to look for a yellow. Now, honestly, it's only been a little while, like perhaps maybe an hour. Uh, this stuff has uh, firmed up well enough. Let's keep going. Uh, soy firms up very nicely. So uh, this is already melted. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, pour off uh, a half a pound of wax and then we're going to color it blue. So sky blue, sky blue. That should do the trick. Now, perhaps you know what I'm doing is I'm letting my uh, cup heat up. Uh, that way I don't have a lot to clean off when I'm done. So, because this will be my last pour here. Now this looks like a simple task to just walk over there and get hot water, but until last week, folks, I had to go to the bathroom to get hot water. And that was a hike. Well, a bit of a hike. You know. So y'all should watch that video. I had a lot of fun doing it. Who's in favor of chucking this whole thing in at once? <laughs> right off the bat. Okay. Well. Okay. Okay. 
Now it's hard to uh, dilute uh, wax once you make it too too dark. Uh, I warn you about that. Going too dark, uh, you'll typically you'll have to split your wax and then add that much volume back in. It's oof. does that look strong? <laughs> we may be fixing it. So we have the 135 uh, soy wax, uh, likely from Golden Brown. So. Okay, and we have half pound. Half pound soy. And we have uh, 12 segments. Of sky blue. Sky blue. Pretty close, but as a personal choice, I think I'd like it a little bit lighter, so I'm going to add some wax. I'm going to add another half a pound just to keep everything e uh, equal. So, what I'm going to do is. Uh, Remember that thing we didn't need again? We need it again. You definitely want to keep your wax nice, clean, tidy, picked up. Uh, you don't want to splosh it around because... Uh, it can get in places that you don't want it to, like uh, on your burner, whatever your heat source is. So just be neat. One pound soy. Twelve segments of sky blue. And There we are. Ideal. So I've wasted half a pound of soy wax just trying to jump the gun, but uh, gives me an excuse to make more candles. I'm going to drop that again three more times just to confirm this, the, uh, the color. Uh, I'm still too close to the white tell what the color is going to be in the candle so I'm going to drop and cool a couple more times and uh, I'll be back for the pour how's that now oh before I forget I just glanced over there and saw there's something I need to do and that is uh, now's the time to clean up the little drip that I have here from the previous pour now I hope when you make this candle that you didn't move it and get a shadow line along here. So when you pour this first layer, you just want to just like stop the earth from spinning for a few seconds and uh, to get a nice crisp line around there and then make sure that your sides are clean for the second pour and we're good to go. All right. I do believe that... Uh, I'm very happy with that. That is a very nice, very nice, slightly lighter. Uh, okay, so this becomes part of our library now. <laughs> uh, when it comes to blues, well, we know how to make a couple of different shades of blue for sure. And, uh, Okay, now what I'm going to do, as you can see here, uh, I have uh, warmed the jar. Now, I've put it into an oven that uh, on, can only get to uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 
Not many do. This one can. And uh, typically, though, something like a, a dehydrator can get uh, its max temperature is about 90 degrees. So you can warm your jar there. And now I've taken it out, and I'm in not any particular hurry to pour the wax yet because uh, remember I talked about that edge just a moment ago and uh, I'm going to let that firm up just a little bit more before I pour wax on top of that. I don't want anything to shadow or blend. So Another trick and the reason is uh, I don't want any ridge lines, which is I'm also going to pour all at once as well to eliminate the possibility of any ridge lines. Uh, soy is it's bad about that. So we're honestly going to give that just a little bit more to cool down. And uh, I want this little sauna to be just a memory to it before we pour in the hot wax. Alright, let's see. See how that works. <clears throat> I think so, I do believe. Uh Believe in magic. Uh, I believe in my hand. <laughs> Steady hands of a chef. Okay, and we want to go, uh, I said an inch and a quarter before, didn't I? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to aim for that, and we're going to aim real hard because uh, it's just even a little bit off. Whew. It's all wonky looking to the eye. Now we all get to enjoy the show. Aim for the center of the candle and begin to pour. And left-handed, stop. That is pretty. Okay. I'm just going to clean up a bit, and then uh, we're going to come back take a look at what we've done here. And uh, but I think we got it here. I'm going to lose about 90% of y'all here. 